Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Murray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I talk with a photographer, a photographer living on the East Coast who has been doing uh, lots of work for many years. They have done uh, photos for different publications. They've done work with individual clients. And they also, of course, do their own uh, photo artistic work for themselves. They're also in the process of releasing a book. So uh, we talk about all of that, how they got started, uh, really what inspires them, and of course about the book that's going to be released. So here is the interview starting right now. I'm Angela Capetta, and I'm a documentary style photographer. So where are you located right now? I'm in Manhattan in New York. Okay. All right. And then how long have you lived there? A long time, off and on, over half my life. Are you from there? Not originally. No, I'm from New Haven. I don't know where that is. In Connecticut? Yes, you do. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm horrible with ge- or geography. Right. I'm geography. Like geom- Actually, I'm bad with geometry, too, but geography. I'll get you a map. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> I love it when guests give me gifts. That's nice. So <laughs> how did you get started uh, as, as an artist and doing the work that you do? So I don't think there's any one answer to that. I think okay. it's a series of decisions that evolve over time and someone kind of becomes who they are in their career through any other any other path forward that any other person would take in their career. Okay. So I started with an interest, I, I became educated and then practice, 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 and here we are. Yeah. And would you yeah. so you're primarily photography? Correct. I shoot uh, film. I'm known for my film work. Okay. Now, and my flash work. And that's the thing is it's, uh, it, did you do any other, like, uh, any other sort of design or artwork from Disciplines? that? Disciplines? I started off as a painter. Yes. Oh, really? Like yeah. What kind of stuff? So I studied figurative painting at Yale and it was, uh, I mean, I love painting, but I wasn't, um, I don't think I was a great painter. And painting, is the type of thing where you really have to paint every day. Right. Uh, it's 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 a, a particularly strong muscle that one needs to work. Painting is, um, I think, one of the bravest art forms because you just have to be fully willing to, to just to just do it eight hours a day. Like when when I shoot, I shoot every day on the street, but I don't yeah. shoot for. My studio days are different because my studio is a dark room. Mm-hmm. You my my studio work, whereas my shooting studio is is the world yeah. so it's a different it's a different set of behaviors but i did start off as a painter and i also studied sculpture which i loved oh. if i wasn't a photographer i think i'd be a sculptor why did yeah. you not do that then um that's a really good question i i, I don't i didn't not start it's just not my profession mm-hmm. i enjoy a great many things but i don't do them professionally do you still, I mean, do you still do sculpture? I don't know if do I, I'm supposed to say do sculpt. I still, um, that's a good question. Um, in certain ways I do. I, I'll make small, small things. Uh, just, I have a painting studio um, at my, my place upstate and I have okay. a, mountain, a mountain house and I have a dark room there and a studio and a painting studio and a little sculpture room. And, and I, I'm constantly making stuff. Like my dream day is, I take film to my dark room and I process all of it. And while it's washing or while the prints are washing, I go to my painting studio and then I paint horrible paintings for a little while. <laughs> they're, they're awful. And then I just sort of flip, flip them out. Like I crank them out. I crank out lousy paintings. And then I go back to my dark room and hang all the film or I hang the prints. That's kind of my day. So painting is kind of like your gardening. Like yeah. it's what you do to unwind. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, that's I love the gardening I too. I actually love oh. gardening. Okay. Love it. Do you have, wait, are you, I, so I assume just because of where your location is that you just live in, like everybody lives in an apartment house. All or on top of each other. Yeah. yeah. So where would no, you garden? I do have a, gar- I do have a garden, um, at, the, at my cabin upstate. Yeah. Okay. You see, that's the thing is my geography is just all, I can only imagine what places are like just from what I've seen on movies and TV and cartoons. Again, I'll get you a map. <laughs> so you said you were at Yale and you were doing painting there. So how did you get into that? Did you go there specifically for art? I or? wanted to study painting. Okay. All right. Yeah. So there was a beginning, a beginning career in painting. I mean, enough I that you went to college. Career. For I was a student. I was a student. Okay. 
Yeah, I guess it's true. Most people go to college. I mean, nobody has any idea what they're going to do with when themselves. You go to when, pre-med, they go to college. when you do pre-med, you're not a doctor. That <laughs> pre-med section, you're not a doctor. You buy a pen, it doesn't right. make you a chef. Now, you were saying uh, uh, with painting, and I was thinking uh, when you were explaining uh, the difficulty of it, but the thing is, is with photography, a lot of it is, especially when you're out in the world and you're, you're framing the shots, you're lucky if you capture a moment or well, setting things up. Luck has a bit to do with it, but when you're a photographer, you have to be a little bit psychic. Yeah. And you have to feel the convergence of things coming, and you also have to know your gear, and you have to know things like physics and math. Yeah. And as you're shooting, your brain is sort of creatively framing, and then your other brain, your other side of your brain is doing the, the shutter speed, the f-stop, the Mm -hmm. film behavior and they're all happening simultaneously. And I think a lot of people become photographers or they think they want to be photographers because they're not good at anything else, but it's as hard to learn as anything else you could learn. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was getting at is with painting, you can go, well, I want a person to be right here. Well, when you're on the street and you capture something, it's like, Oh, great. Or you can wait. No, no, you can wait. (laughs) It's true. You can just wait and eye it up and just, just wait. And I've waited I've spent hours of my day waiting for the right thing to walk by. Yeah. No, there's, yeah. there's a couple of pictures and I'm sure they're there for a purpose that are on your website <laughs> that uh, there's one in particular where all these people are kind of looking around. They're at a wedding. They're all just kind of looking around like, what the hell? Like looking off in the distance. Then one okay. stunningly gorgeous, like, you know, European guy is standing there looking directly at the camera. And then some woman is like sneezing or something or getting ready to yell. Oh, is it a right horizontal next- color yeah. picture? And, and, all it, and everybody's space. all in this weird awkward pose. But then the one gorgeous guy is sitting there looking directly at the camera, like striking a pose. You just see <laughs> it and your brain you make that connection and you sort of will it to hold you will it while you grab your gear like you will it yeah and if somebody moves i go up, up, up yeah and i tell them not to move and they usually listen to me and i see quite a few of those that are on your on your website and i, I and that's what made me think of that it's it's because it's like man it's it, like i didn't i wanted to ask you like do you just do the like multiple multiple things in case something never. happens never okay all right Never. <laughs> so how would you explain your work then? Uh, I mean, we just talked about one of the photos that stood out to me, but how would you describe the work that you do, especially if you're doing one just for your own artistic value and not one that you got hired for? Well, the rules sort of extrapolate throughout the whole process. So okay. the rules for making pictures at an event apply to the rules that make pic- when you're making pictures on the street also apply to the rules to making pictures inside of someone's home. The rules don't really change. What does change is things just sort of happening in front of the lens. And you have to have your concentration on all the time. If, if, um, if someone's working for me and they're holding my gear, if I hire someone who's a grip and they keep talking to me, Mm -hmm. I've actually had to turn to them and say, I need you to work this out on your own. Mm -hmm. you're here to hold the stuff and not talk because you're breaking my concentration. I have to stop what I'm doing. I have to change. I have to formulate an answer. I have to turn around and look at you and everything I'm doing is now gone because you need me to talk to you. Mm -hmm. The only conversation I'm interested in having is the one that happens inside of my brain. So it's from the brain to the fingers, like what I tell the camera to do and the lens and the flash to do it's happening in real time. Okay. So does that answer your question? Yeah. And <laughs> you <laughs> you just made me Great. think of another thing too is uh it, it it's it never occurs to me that uh with the equipment and everything that you need in the lighting, yeah, you have to have other people working with you. So it's actually Sometimes you do. Yeah. If it's a big job, you have a lot of gear or if I'm shooting something that's really big and I need help And I have multiple cameras and multiple. Sometimes I bring a student or or a a grip or someone I've hired. It happens. It happens a lot. Um, Most of the time, ninety percent of the time, I'm on my own. Okay. Yeah. When you do work with people, how do you find them? I hire them, like you'd hire anybody else. I mean, do you just uh, put it online? Do you go to the college? Um, There, there are resources for people who are hiring grips and camera assistants and. Okay. There are resources within my field, just like there would be resources for any other field. Okay. Yep. You have a studio. You were mentioning that before. and I do. uh, And you, uh, I mean, clearly you'll want to, when you're not being hired for work, you're 
making photos and you're going out in the world and finding right. things. What is your process for when you, do you just walk out and go, let's see what happens? Or do you have specific things that you want to go out and capture that day? Like, okay, I'm going to do photos about this. Like, the answer what's your to all of that is yes. Okay. Well, what's your process for when you start a project? So the other day I woke up and I've been thinking about this for a while. <clears throat> I wanted to, um, photograph the, 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 the diamond and metal trade, the, the gold trade, the 47th Street in New York is sort of the last strip of un of, of undeveloped commercial real estate in okay. like the garment district and the jewelry district. So I've been thinking about it quite a bit. And um, I like photographing labs and scientists and clean rooms and, and, sh and working in very restrictive environments as well as being kind of free and loose on the streets. So I thought what's a greater lab than a jewelry jewelry lab, you know, done mm -hmm. polishing and, and the things, the stones are very small. They're the smallest thing in the frame. Yeah. So how do you photograph something that you can't really see? So I just decided to pack up my gear one morning. I woke up and it was Friday, which is, which means it's Shabbat and they all close mm -hmm. at three. So I had to hustle. So I packed up my gear one morning and um, I called up a friend who was Israeli and I said, is today a holiday? And she said, no. I said, good. I hung up on her. I went straight to the, garment <laughs> I went straight to the jewelry district. Okay. And I just started going into businesses and asking if I could photograph. And they all said yes. One said no. And I gave him my card. And he obviously Googled me while I was walking down the street because then he chased me. Okay. And invited me back in. You know, they Google me and they find out that I'm, you know, I, I've been doing this for a while. And I'm creden credentials and I, you know, I'm not some weirdo and they, well, I am, a, I am a total weirdo. I'm not that kind of weirdo. I was going to say. <laughs> and they, they let me, you know, and it's all these guys who have these first generation kids who work in the front and I'm a first generation kid. Okay. So um, I, I relate to the kind of the role of the American child in front of the family business and they, you know, they're very nice and they let me in and I go back and I shoot them again. And sometimes I'll make a little mini documentary, mm -hmm. like a small film about them doc talking about their family's evolution into the diamond trade. And a lot of these people escaped Russia. They were Russian Jews and they escaped. There was one, I'm a, my parents, I'm a Italian and one, there was one Italian shop on the street that I found. And, it was a story similar to my own family story. And it was very just the graciousness that I'm allowed when I, when I decide I want to shoot something never ceases to amaze me. And sometimes people say no, and I'm okay with that. I don't force anybody to do anything that they don't want to do. So I photograph them and then I go home and, you know, I process all the film and then I go back. And so, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that right now. I've gone maybe four or five times. Oh, you're currently working on this is what you're saying. Yeah. I just started it like this summer. Now, just, do you, why not? Do you write? Cause it sounds like, uh, you're doing a photojournalism piece. Are you also writing, uh, no, I'm not doing stuff? it. No, that's okay. actually incorrect. I'm not doing a photojournalism piece. Well, that's what I was asking. Journalism it literally like means you work for a newspaper. Oh, okay. So I'm that's misusing that first of all. And, uh, yeah. So it's it just, a bit so of a all right. Yeah. Well, and also just my lack of knowledge, <laughs> but the, uh, but it sounds like you're, you're studying something. And I guess my question is really, are you also writing text to go, to go along with it? Or is it really? No, just I do. Photos? I do a fair amount of writing in my job. So I have to write for things like grant applications. Uh -huh. I have to write for uh, residency applications. I also have to write things like project summaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, for for the projects that I do, I also have to update my CV on a regular basis. I have bios that I have to write, and they always have to say something a little bit different depending on where they're going. Okay. So I do I do a fair amount of writing. I'm working on my first book right now, and um, I saw that. Yeah, I'm doing a fair amount of writing for that as well. Okay. Can you tell me about the book a little bit? Yeah. What would you like to know? Uh, basically, what is it and how did it get started? <laughs> so it's my first book. Okay. It's a monograph, um, which is a monograph means mono one graph. You know, it's a book of one artist and one body of work. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So it's a body of work I worked on in the 90s, kind of, again, in the pre-gentrified neighborhood of the Lower East Side through the eyes of one family. I was photographing in that neighborhood quite extensively. And then I 
I met, I lived in the neighborhood and it was, it was kind of beautiful and special to me. It was really kind of like how I grew up multi-generationally mm-hmm. and, um, you know, where you have like an aunt above you and then you live there and then the grandmother and that, you know, like everyone kind of lives on top of each other or on the same block. So I recognize that as, um, a pretty powerful component to the, the way those streets and the apartments of the Lower East Side were kind of set up. And that was just how I organized it in my head. And I decided I would tell the story through the life of one family and uh, one of the, one of the family members in particular. So I photographed that for, I don't know, maybe almost 10 years. Wow. And so it was um, a publisher saw it and they were very interested in it. And then, we ran a Kickstarter. Kickstarter came to me and asked me if I would be interested in running a Kickstarter. And I'm Gen X. We don't ask for money. <laughs> we we don't ask for things. We don't care. Yeah. You know, so I just felt like it was a bit of pandering. But then I thought, well, this is just how it is now. Yeah. And my publisher made a very interesting point. It's kind of how they take the temperature of the audience. Mm-hmm. So we had a, we ran a successful Kickstarter. I'm, you know, I didn't ask for a lot of money. I asked for a little bit of money, and it was enough just to kind of cover the scans of the film because you have to scan everything for publication. And then, and then I found out I was going to be featured in the New Yorker. The mm-hmm. pro- the project was being featured in the New Yorker, which is every documentary and every documentary style photographer's dream yeah so i mean you go your whole career without something like that and i got it before my first book even came out so after that came out it just kind of exploded in this way i never thought would happen and and my publisher um they they just they loved it and they loved the book and the idea and then we brought in a designer larone cormas from cormas design she's designing an exquisite book i mean i almost don't deserve it it's so beautiful and and the publisher has been nothing short of magical. I have a wonderful publisher. Um, her, my editor is Elizabeth Keene at Thames and Hudson. She's been so, so supportive and outside of the box thinking. And she's kind of encouraged me to write things for my own book that I never thought were, they were locked and loaded, but I just didn't know they were something I would need to address. So, like what? so Elizabeth asked me to reflect on why I shoot and, it was this kind of short little summary. It was the Homer Simpson essay was something my editor started calling it because I quoted Homer Simpson in it. And I said, everything is terrible if you remember it, which is sort of my dad's whole philosophy of life. Your dad's? My dad. He was just this, you know, weird psycho Mediterranean guy, just like a weird genius. And he just never really reflected on the past very much. And he was an engineer and very much in the moment. And, I was also a baby actor and a baby model and there's no evidence of it. There are a few pictures, but the commercials that I was in, I remember my parents would always call the the church oh. to ask them to tape it because we didn't have a TV. <laughs> so um, they would ask the nuns to tape it and the nuns would always call the next day and say, well, we couldn't find it. Okay. So I just sort of felt like I was disappearing. I felt like there was no evidence of me and, the funny thing is that I don't really photograph myself. I have one body of work where I photograph myself, but my work is about other people and social landscape and relationships. And, you know, it's, um, it, it, it's very family, uh, family driven and inspired. So I kind of feel like the essay that my editor asked me to write is, is akin, akin to that. And then of course I had to write a project summary describing the body of work and then um, acknowledgements and things like that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I find that part so difficult trying to explain yourself in anything you do. And it's, I mean, it makes sense that you have to do it, but man, I just wish somebody else could do it for you, but they can't, sure. you know, <laughs> no, it's not possible for someone else to explain what motivates you. Yeah. And, can't, but it's just, if it, it's one of the things where I want to say, I'm not alone in it's the absolute last thing I'm going to take care of before I finish any project is trying to write down what the explanation is or trying so sometimes, to. Sometimes I will actually write a project summary for pictures that don't exist yet. Oh, see, that's smart. To get me go to get, to help me wrap my head around the idea. Yeah. I, I need I to did, implement that more. Ugh. I did that with the Joffrey ballet. I was the artist in residence there for two years and 
I was, I live in the neighborhood of the ballet school and I would see these kids um, just walking around with their toe shoes and, you know, their hair would be in buns and they'd be in their street clothes smoking. And I'm like, they're just, <laughs> you know, they're just kids just right. going to art school. They're fat. They're in a conservatory and they're wonderful. And they're in this idyllic part of their lives and they're athletes and they're training and they're people think dance. So oh, dance, but they're in charge of, of um, a certain type of expression and athleticism that I think a lot of athletes don't ever get to see. And they're yeah. under the charge of a general. Mm -hmm. So I wrote this project summary for pictures that didn't exist yet. And I sent it to the owner of the school, the headmaster of whatever his title is of the school. Huh. And he wrote to me that night and he granted me permission. He said, I get, ex I get requests all the time and I always say no, but yours was very professional hmm. because this is a job. Yeah. It's a job and you have to be professional like it's any other job. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Now that leads me into, I wanted to know with uh, some of the jobs that you've had, uh, mm -hmm. even for some of the publications you work for. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you approach those? Is it the same sort of thing? Do you approach them? Do they come to you? They like, come to me. They come to you. And now how do you, yeah. how does that happen? I mean, that's, it's, it's easy to say that. But like, if other exactly people were going, how do I get it? You know, I haven't exactly been waitressing for 20 years. I've been right. working really hard and people know where to find me. Yeah. So if people want a certain look and a certain type of thing, they bring me in. Okay. Um, it's a collaboration. All right. What are some yeah. of, what are some of the places that you've, uh, you've actually done work for? I, I don't know how to frame I mean, that question, but like publications and things clients? like that. Clients? You mean yeah. clients? Yeah, clients. I mean, I'd rather not name drop. I'd rather not list my credential. I mean, Fair. people can Google me and see where I've shot. It's just, you know, I, I've been very lucky. I've worked for some extremely big, big publications, big houses. I've done things like fashion week behind the scenes. I've been lucky enough to be flown all over the world to shoot things like weddings. And, um, I once got flown all the way around the country, uh, because a, a grand dom of a family wanted her whole family photographed. Nice. And I got flown around the whole country photographing people at home. And it's been, uh, remarkable the extent of, of the enjoyment I've had for my career, but I know how to, again, it's a business and people yeah. have to know how to find you. And that's a component that's often forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. Here's an interesting thing uh, that I noticed too, in some of the work that you've been posting online, um, mm -hmm. along with your Instagram uh, profile, there are a lot of reels on there. There's actually a lot yeah. of video shorts. Now, is this something, yeah. I mean, this makes sense to me because it's, I mean, they're only like six second or three second videos, but yeah. it's like motion photography. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you, what do you think of that type of format? What's I your, love it. I think it's so much fun. When did you start, when did you start uh, diving into that? So I've always enjoyed filmmaking. I've always enjoyed, um, I, I, I've made short, short documentaries for most of my career. I did a short on, um, a Sicilian pianist in the Rachmaninoff room at the Steinway studio, just playing this very special piano. I once did a story on, uh, you know, a family just getting ready for the, the daughter getting ready for the bar mitzvah, you know, again, like six minutes I did, um, uh, you know, and then I shoot commercial work where I've directed com long form commercials for big companies. And it, it's just something I've always really enjoyed it it appeals to my extremely short attention span yeah yeah <laughs> have you so have you do, uh dove into tiktok to do that as well like what are, i love tiktok i have to take it off my phone though <laughs> i had to take it off my phone it's, there's it's, a lot of people like it it comes and goes it's uh, <laughs> it's just evil it's the spy software it's just so evil but i do love it i think there's some great art on tiktok okay <laughs> yeah i love it now, uh, when did you start actually showing your work publicly? Uh, like uh, putting it. I had out my there first in the world? solo show in 1992. Wow, what was that? Or what was the uh, the format? It was my first postgraduate body of work. Um, I had just come back from Italy, and I was photographing um, again a family. I was working for them as their academic uh, scholarly assistant mm -hmm. in their villa in Tuscany, and. I was their little boy's tutor and I photographed there for the duration of my time there. And then I came back, I had a body of work. I showed it to a gallery and they showed it and wow. sold out opening night. Where was this at? It was at a gallery that doesn't exist anymore. It was oh. in Soho. Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it was I, before everything moved up to it was right before everything moved up to Chelsea. Okay. Yeah. Now, from that point in time up until now and all the things that you've done, what would you say so as as you uh made a career out of this, what are some <laughs> of the things along the way that you've learned that you think other people could benefit just from the experience that you've had uh, for people who are starting out or people who are trying right. to get into Right. So it's business. a job and you have to know how to buy low, sell high, mm-hmm. live in the black. It's a, it's a job. It's not yeah. um, hard to figure out. It's arithmetic. Okay. And I, uh, you had mentioned before that you started a Kickstarter and I did. Yeah. Well, they made me. <laughs> they made me. Well, and I wanted to ask because of the funding, and I agree with the with with the uh, Gen X version of like it feels I'm weird not to go like can yeah. you? But you have been using uh, Buy Me a Coffee. I've noticed. Yeah, I love doing. Buy Me a Coffee. Okay, I think so tell me about your experience with it because that's that's I'm the same. I'm always like, oh, I could do this, but then I'm like, who cares? Who wants to coffee. give me anything? I don't have a problem with somebody buying me a coffee. Okay, that's the line. <laughs> How did you how did you uh, come about that that particular format of of support? My niece told me. Oh, really? So it was yeah. just passed along to you. Okay, do, do that's you, it. You do you go to your niece for any other technological? No, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm perfectly capable of setting up my own link tree. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you had your website? I know that you use a WordPress website. How long have I had my website? Yeah. I mean, my whole career. Okay, Angela so you did start out early. The domain I registered when you could register a domain. Yeah. And do you do any other sort of uh, promotion or advertising for the work that you do? Mm, no. No. So they, okay. It's just Instagram, my website, word of mouth. My clients love me. They okay. love me. Yeah. And how long are some of the clients that you've had? Like, how long have you had them? Like, do you have so I shot, ones? I, ha- I shot something recently for a client and um, I said to the, I said to him, I, we've been together since the beginning. And he said, yeah. And he said, what do you think? I said, I didn't plan on living this long. <laughs> oh, that's a great response. <laughs> said, Sam, I didn't plan on living this long. I don't know what to tell you. Here we are. If we're still doing this, if I'm still alive in 20 years, you can hire me again. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, with the book, when do you uh, plan on, when can people expect that to be out? When can they start looking for it? We're in design phase now. Um, we should have a pre or link to pre-order uh, to the Amazon. To, Thames and Hudson should be coming up with that soon. And then the book itself should be out end of quarter one or beginning of quarter two of next year. Okay. And now, yeah. are, are there any other projects or things coming in the future that you'd like to tell people about or can tell people about that they I mean, should there's always, I'm always up to something. <laughs> they should just follow you and see. It's just... Yeah, I know what you know. (laughs) And uh, if people wanted to do that, where would you suggest that they follow you or keep track of what you're up to? So um, thank you for asking. I have an Instagram, which is my name with a little underscore at the end. And then my website is I have a blog and um, I'm fairly active on LinkedIn. Okay. I get a lot of work from LinkedIn. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. And I want Mm -hmm. to thank you so much for talking with me today. This has been great. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. 